Hey everybody. <clears throat> uh, again, tonight's pour is going to be a, a car themed one. Uh, I've been kind of excited about doing this one. I've been wanting to do it for a little while. I've had different thoughts on it, um, but I'm going to do a Batmobile one. Uh, my favorite Batmobile is the one from the original Batman TV series. I do like the ones from the movies, um, but probably just because that's what I grew up with and I just thought it was the coolest car. And uh, I've actually not seen the original one, but I've seen replicas of them in person at car shows and stuff. And it just I've just always uh, liked it. I even remember having, back in the day, in the 70s, uh, I had a remote controlled um, Batmobile of this this style of Batmobile, the old TV show Batmobile. But it was a it wasn't like you'd think today's uh, where you, it was. I believe it was wireless. I'm not, I can't remember if it was or not. Um, I know some of the original ones didn't have wires on it, but. I can't remember if this one did or not, but anyway, it had a, I remember it had a wheel in the center of the wheels and it would only go forward and backwards, but when you went backwards, the wheel in the middle turned and it's the only way you could get it to turn. It was, at the time, it was great, but the remote control cars they have now are nothing, uh, Nothing like that, and they're so much better than what they were back then. But, for those of you that don't know what the original Batmobile car looks like, um, it is this. So, this, and it even actually says TV series Batman. So, that's what I want to do, and, and I've had different thoughts on it. Um, doing a black with the a little bit of red but then I also had thought of trying to find the bat signal the old TV bat signal which was like yellow and or was black with yellow Batman symbol on it finding like a decal or something plastic and kind of doing a like the bat signal off of it but I don't know how that could work very well um, so I think what I've decided to do is kind of just do flames out the back of it because in the original series, um, it actually has on the very back of it, I don't know if you can see it, that right there would sh actually shoot real flames out. And it did in this TV series, original TV series, um, which I'm old enough that I remember watching those on TV when I was a kid. Uh, so <clears throat> I think that's what I'm going to do and shoot it out. And, uh, because I, I just do like the flames anyway. So I'm going to do a black and negative space with the flames. Probably be red, a little yellow, and some orange in it. And uh, so that's, that's what we're going to do tonight. And we'll see how that turns out. All right, we got the paints mixed. And I'm going to go for it here. Now, I'm, this is going to be a Dutch pour, but I, I, as I was mixing the paints and going over in my head what I wanted to do with this flame part of it, because you do want, you have to decide whether you're going to have it really blow out or just, I want to, I think I'm going to go straight, just a thin, try to get a thin line of fire coming out. Or a fire look coming out so I don't really I'm trying to decide whether I want should go with just blowing it out with a straw which gives you a little bit more control of it or I do have 
I went into Cracker Barrel in town and bought one of this. I think it was dubbed the smallest hair dryer in the world, working hair dryer in the world. So I do have that. I have used it. I think it's a little too strong of a little too strong because it. I used it right after I got it to, to see what it would do and I think it just blew it out too far. Didn't have the control on it that I wanted. One of these days I'm going to break down and just get one of those airbrush type things. Because sometimes I don't like how the hairdryer does it at times. So, but I'm going to try it, see how it goes. Thought about doing the straw, I thought about just pouring it out and then just kind of swirling with a stick or something. And trying to, or a swipe. But I do think I'm going to, I do think I'm going to use that one. I'll have to find it. And I know I saw it the other day. My studio is not that big. It's just a, a small bedroom. It used to belong, used to be my daughter's bedroom. Oh, yeah, here it is. So it's not like I'm overpacked in here and stuff. So this is it. I think it was like 10 or $12. Uh, the one thing I didn't really care for is that it came with a thing to plug in to like a USB, USB port. Now why, now why, why? I don't understand why. I know technology is going, maybe a lot of things get plugged into USB ports, but this isn't a computer. It's just a, it just needs an electrical outlet to run, right? So I had to, I had to get one of these to plug it in. I had an extra one, but I had to find one of these extra ones just for this. Now, now I know I'm an, old, an older guy. I love electronics. I love computers, but no, don't, don't do that. People don't do that. Make it just regular outlet. Just boom, plug in. Oh, come on. Anyway. Okay. That was my old man rant. So now I got to plug that. I ain't plugging it in. I don't know. I don't understand why you got to plug in something to plug in something. I, uh, oh. Anyway, as you can tell, I'm not a big fan of that. Because, like, I got a beard trimmer. I bought an, a beard trimmer. With re, It's rechargeable, yeah. Doesn't have to be plugged in when I use it, but I do need to charge it up. And it came with the same thing. I'm like, what? what's up with that? And uh, so now I've got to have it, one of those. I have to have one of those to charge up. I don't plug it into my computer. I don't, I'm not cha charging my beard trimmer to my computer. Ugh. It's just nuts. Nutty. I'm afraid to get a new toaster because I'm afraid I'm going to have to plug it into a USB port. Who knows? Anyway. All right. So we'll get the black on. So... And I'll show you how loud this thing is too, this this uh, little one. It's not as loud as a hair dryer, no. But see how that, might have to hold it up quite a bit to 
Did you see how that blows up? Yeah, so it's, it does blow up pretty good. So that's what I'm gonna use. And when I used to do these Dutch pours, these, uh, Oh, the the where you like flip the cup and you want to and you poke a hole in it, you drag it. Um, I always put too much paint on it. I just don't know what it is about me that does that. But I always put too much paint. I think I've got a little bit too much paint. This is probably gonna go just about everywhere because it's really hard to mix. Just teeny weeny bit that you need for a pour like this I'm gonna have to cover these up and cover these little cups up try to try to save them for another pour but I think what I'll do is I'll blow this black up on there and get it in a thinner line Yes, I do get paint on myself here. It all washes off, so no big deal. All right. Actually, I might use the hair dryer to blow this up on it. Well, it's not <clears throat> not too bad, but not really flamey looking. So I'm gonna have to add some more red to it, I think. And get the trusty old straw out. I have it right here. Tuck my shirt in. This is my work shirt. Yes, it is my work shirt. I wear my work shirt a lot. I don't know what it is anymore. I used to, 
do some get some pretty good get some pretty good uh, flame stuff going here. Just doesn't seem like it's doing it anymore. on this up on the electric line. Of course that didn't help any. So it adds more red. Orange. Yeah this is gonna have a lot on it. Not liking it, not liking it. Gonna have to be straw. That looks a little bit more like fire. like that better. Wish I had that I'm down there too.
I do like this, it's almost like an explosion coming out. And then, this is a little bit better there. I'm not too thrilled about that right there, but I think it'll, I think it'll work. Um, there's almost a part of me that wish I could just take this completely off. just have that little and I think I'll leave it on there boy I came close to taking that off Yeah, I think I'll leave it on there. Oh, all right. All right. So there it is. All right, we're ready to resin this thing. I think it turned out pretty good right in here and right in there. I'm not too sure about the rest. Got a little smoky from the fire look to it which is good so let's get going with this again on this one this will be my second one using the new resin that I got I'm not too sure about it yet I do like the way it mixes and pours out of the jugs but the last one was I don't know I think I just like the pro marine really well because I've worked with it so much I mean this doesn't work as different but what I try to do is since I resin these in the evening usually about 10 or 11 at night or so what I'll do is and I get up about 6 30 in the morning to go to work as soon as I get up and get around I come in the next morning and I take the I take the tape off the back because I find that it it really does come off a lot faster, a lot easier when it's still not hardened all the way. So it's easier to pull off the tape. And the Pro Marine is, it's usually a little tacky still. Which isn't too bad, but but the this stuff, the aluminite aluminite, excuse me, was really really tacky, so tacky that um, it kind of. I was using a but well, like it was like a TV. TV tray type thing I had and I set it on there and was peeling the back of it off and when I pulled it up it had stuck to the TV tray 
pulled a little bit of resin off of the edge. So I wasn't really thrilled about that. Fortunately, it was a, the uh, negative space on it was white and the canvas is white and you can't really see it unless you're just really looking for it. So, but I know it's there. So as I'm sure fellow artists will tell you that we see all the flaws that nobody else sees in our paintings. So that's what I will see whenever I look at that one until I sell it. Which I do have a show coming up next weekend. April 7th, 18th? April 18th. And uh, I will be in Muncie, Indiana. I live about... I think it'd take me about 30, 35 minutes, 40 minutes to get there. I don't go to Muncie a whole lot. I used to I used to live closer to Muncie and I spent a lot of time in Muncie. Uh, for those of you that aren't in the state or familiar with Muncie, that is where Ball State University is. Some of you might have heard of Ball State. Probably the most famous person to come out of Ball State was is David Letterman. I'm sure most of you have heard of him. So, he is an Indiana boy. But, uh, so I'll be up there for two days. It's, it's an event called Ship Shawana on the Road. And I'm Probably a lot of you don't know what Shipshawana is. Shipshawana is a town in the northern part of Indiana. And it's kind of in Amish country. Well, it is Amish country. So we have a lot of Amish up in that area. And uh, so it's a big tourist attraction. A lot of people go up there. Um, my wife and I have been up there. Uh, one time so far and uh, and of course we went up there for the for the Amish experience I guess and just the, the shops and the the food uh, we ate at a really great Amish restaurant felt the food was just phenomenal and so um, since it is a big tourist attraction and so they, they hold these shows in cities. Um, I think there's four cities in Indiana that they are at this over the spring and into the fall. Um, Fort Wayne, Kokomo, Muncie, and Richmond. And uh, I did the one in Kokomo about a month ago, and it was really high traffic, so that's why I wanted to do the one in Muncie because they're not that far away. I'm not much, I don't like to travel real far to do these shows. I try to stay in the central Indiana area. Kokomo was about an hour and 20 minutes away because I did a show in Waynesville, Ohio one. So the farthest one went, we had to go away for, and it was about a two and a half hour drive, three hours. And it was a, we actually drove up the night before, spent the night and uh, did the show and packed up and drove home that night. It was on a Saturday night and it was, we lost money on that show because um, I think we made our booth rent back, but with the traveling gas, the hotel cost, and just food. Yeah, we lost money on that one. So, but the Ship Shawana one is a, was a big draw in Kokomo. And the reason I said, I believe it was the Ship Shawana that brought people in was because I have actually done a show for another organization 
in Kokomo at the same facility, the same venue, uh, the event center there. And it was uh, kind of a flop of a show. It was dead. There was hardly anybody that was there. But the Ship Shawana one, there were actually, I was walking around to the other, after I'd set up and, and was ready before the show opened, I was walking around looking at the other booths. I went by the entrance and there was a line of people waiting to get in, which means it's going to be a good show. And it was, it was, it's a two day event. So I have one in Muncie. Um, next Saturday, it'll be the 18th. So I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm, I need to make some coasters because I'm getting real light, low on coasters and they're always a big seller. But here I am doing <coughs> Hot Wheels ones. So this is the Hot Wheel I'm doing. The nice Batmobile. So... That's a good spot. So the ship Shawana also does in, in uh, Michigan and Ohio as well. Um, but I'm only going to do the ones. I'm, I'm not sure if I'll do the one in Richmond. Richmond's about an hour away. Um, it's right on the Illinois or the Ohio. Indiana, Ohio line. State line. So. I might do that one if it goes well in Muncie, but uh, and I've not done a show in Richmond before. But all right, this one is uh, done. I think it looks pretty cool. I love the Batmobile. Uh, as I said earlier, out of all the Batmobiles, this one is actually my favorite Batmobile. I do like the newer ones, but not as much as this one. Probably because it was you know, from my childhood, and it brings back fond memories of watching the the old Batman show on TV, so, um, there you go, I hope you enjoyed.